This is part two of the Algebra 2 EOC review, the day one material, function, complex numbers. So look with me in your notes packet with this function and its operation review. So remember that f plus g of x is the same as just adding f of x to g of x, and subtracting is the same as taking f of x minus g of x. If you see a little multiplication dot, you just take f of x times g of x, and if you see a fraction, then you're going to divide. Usually, you're going to need to name a domain if you have to do an operation with a function. So the domain of a sum difference or a product and quotient consists of the x values that are in the domain of both the original functions. Also, or additionally, the domain of the quotient does not include x values that make the denominator 0. So watch out for that. All right, so <clears throat> in your notes packet, look at this problem. So we're going to um, divide two functions and determine the domain. So we've got f of x and g of x, and we're asked to, the, to divide them. So that notation means take f of x and divide it by g of x. So you're just going to take those two functions and do what it says. So 6x divided by x to the 3 fourths power. If we simplify those exponents, we can subtract 1 minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth. So our new function is 6 times x to the 1 fourth. Now I need to state a domain rule. So let's go back to the original functions. My f of x equals 6x can be all real numbers because that's a linear function. My g of x has an even root, and I do not want a negative number under my even root. So my do domain will be x is greater than or equal to 0. Now look down at my answer. So I need to include both of those, um, which means I would say x can be greater than or equal to 0, but I cannot have 0 as an option because I have that x um, expression in the denominator. So my final domain is x can only be positive, only be greater than 0, so that I won't get 0 in my denominator and I won't get a negative under my even root. Now let's compose functions. So we have f of x and g of x and h of x, but our directions just say to compose f and g. So f and that little symbol means f of g of x. So you're literally going to take what g of x equals, which is negative 2x, and you're going to place it into the f of x fun function for x. So simplifying, uh, if we do the math, we just take negative 2x and square it, negative 6 times negative 2x, and then plus 2. And that's all we can do to simplify. Notice that h of x was not used, and sometimes that happens in a problem. You're given extra material that you won't use. Okay, go to number 26 now in your pretest packet. So it says, given these two functions, what is f of g of x? <clears throat> so we're composing. So we're going to take what g of x is, which is 4x minus 10, and we're going to place it into the f of x function for x. So notice we need to square 4x minus 10. So I did that and got 16x squared minus 80x plus 100. Then I take 8 times 4x minus 10, subtract 20. So my simplified answer is 16x squared minus 48x. Now I didn't show my work when I squared 4x minus 10, so I'm going to show that to you now. So I'm writing that next to each other, and then I am just distributing using the FOIL method. And you can see where that negative 80x comes from. Go back to your um, notes packet, and let's do this extra problem. So you're going to look at these four equations and these two graphs to pick out which have a minimum. So these are quadratic equations and graphs. We think about the vertex for a minimum or a maximum with a quadratic. And then we think about, is it opening up or down? Because parabolas that open up, they have minimum values. That's their vertex. So if you look at the first two equations, they have a negative out front for that very first value. So they are going to open down. But the second two equations have positive values. So they will open up and they will have a minimum vertex. 
And then of our two equations, just, or sorry, graphs, one is opening up. So the one that opens up does have a minimum. The other one has a maximum because the vertex is the highest or the greatest point. So let's continue with these practice problems in the notes packet. Which graph has the end behavior of this, the same end behavior as this function? Well, for end behavior, you're going to look at the degree of the function, which is seven, and the leading coefficient, which is negative. So it's an odd degree with a negative leading coefficient. So we'll have opposite end behavior that is up on the left and down on the right. So the only graph that matches with that is the first one. So now let's talk about function characteristics, domain and range. So the domain is the set of all possible x values which make the function work. It will give you real um, y values for the output. So when you're finding the domain, here are some things to remember. The denominator cannot be zero. A number under a square root cannot be negative. It has to be zero or positive. If there are no limitations to the domain, meaning you don't have to worry about a zero on the denominator or a negative under an even root, then the domain is all real numbers. To figure out the domain, look at the equation and look at the graph. Whatever you can do, both if you can. The range is the resulting y values that you get after putting in all the possible x values. To find a range, if you're given a domain, just plug in your limiting domain values to see what your y values are. Now you're going to follow the link um, or the address that is um, given on your note sheet and do practice problems um, online. So these are on a site called MathBits. I think it's .org, maybe it's .com. And they have some really good explanation with each of the problems about domain and range. All right, now let's solve some functions. So these are just, this is in your notes packet, three random functions that you experience in Algebra 2. You have to look at each one and just figure out how to solve. So the first is a compound inequality. Notice that the variable is n, and so in any equation, you need to isolate the variable and figure out what it is by undoing the math. So we're going to add 12 to all sides of the inequality. We'll get negative 21 is less than or equal to negative 7n, which is less than negative 14. Then we'll divide all sides by negative 7. So positive 3, I need to switch my sign since I'm dividing by a negative, is greater than or equal to n which is greater than positive two. Now, your second function is an absolute value. So we need to isolate that by adding five. Then the strategy for solving an absolute value equation is to set up two cases. One where it equals a positive value, so positive seven, and then one where it equals a negative, negative seven. Add your eight to both sides. So your two answers are negative one and negative 15. If you plug those back in, they will both make that um, equation true. Now lastly, we have an exponential. So the two methods to solve an exponential that we've talked about are rewriting using the same base but different power or the property of equality. Well, that is the property of equality, sorry, or switching forms. So I noticed that 3 and 23 can be rewritten as a base of 3. So my first on the left side, I just rewrite 243 is 3 to the fifth power. Then I can simply set my exponents equal to each other and solve. So x equals negative 2. All right, that concludes this review um, day. So you can go on to the next video, the next PowerPoint, um, the next section in your note sheet to continue reviewing for the Algebra 2 end of course assessment.